after two long weeks, we finally get some private server news, and it's Project Epoch. Project Epoch just came out with their January developer, uh, blog, blog, vlog, whatever word it is, <laughs> and log, I guess, and, well, we got a lot of juicy tidbits I'm gonna show you right here. So, first things first is the cross faction they did a poll i did um a uh, vote in the poll i i actually don't remember because it was a while ago but i believe i voted for um cross faction for everything except for the world bosses because when you're looking at private server now normally i'm against cross faction just for lore reasons but when you're looking at a small private server with a thousand two thousand people on you know they're spread across 60 levels you're not going to have a lot of people leveling together and you're just splitting them off even more with the faction so i think for the purposes of gameplay and leveling it should be okay for cross faction however it should be made a point that it's not cross faction in the lore of the server that's why it's um that's why i said it's okay for everything except for large scale pvp and the world bosses and stuff to be cross faction so it looks like that's what they're probably going to be uh going with with the exception of battlegrounds and world bosses uh, probably large world events too it really depends we'll have to see how that happens the next thing is knowledge is power so they uh talked about this before i think i i made a i commented on this in a previous video but you will at the end game be able to pick and choose whatever racial you would like for your character so you're gonna have to start off if you're a tauren you're gonna have to start off with war stomp which is okay war stomp is one of the better ones anyway but at level 60 you will have the option to partake on a quest for a different racial and upon completion of the quest you will have unlocked it and then you can use it at will so they're saying here 16 racial knowledge chains now i don't know if it's everyone or if it's faction locked i don't think they um i don't think they really talked about that here but i don't know it's kind of weird that a, a, if, a, if you're an orc if you go on a quest chain to learn about racial heritage of a night elf it just doesn't make sense for me so if it was more faction orientated it would make it would make more sense to me if it was like that but either way we'll have to see how that part works out but for now know that if you go on the uh quest chain then you can unlock the racial and it shows here a troll learning the tauren war stomp ability and even though they uh, edited this video of him going on doing the quest chain it looks like it would take you anywhere from like half an hour to an hour to complete and it will be a level 60 quest chain so you will have to be level 60 uh data mining measures so they were saying how people were data mining and finding out like secrets and hidden things within the game files through data mining therefore certain objects and items what have you will show up like this uh the retrieving item information it will it will look like that if you happen to find it in the game files until the game has registered that somebody has found it and it appears in their loot in their like loot box right so when you open up and you get the loot box or whatever and it's in there it'll register it and then anyone will be able to see what item it is but until then you won't be able to know and that will prevent people from spoiling secrets let secrets be secrets until found once it's found go ham uh the next thing is they're just talking about a lot of uh technical things when it comes to different models and the various uh, formats for collision and non-collision yada yada and how they used it within the newer areas such as Barrett and hold which you see a picture of right here we can go down a little bit more and they were saying how by using the different methods they were able to um play around with models and you see here one of them is bugged out it's like all bleh, all stretched out everywhere but they eventually fixed it and they used basically the base model of the cataclysm turtle because you can see the shape of the like the face of the sh er, shape of the face there you go of the uh, turtle right there it's definitely the cataclysm turtle but it's got the kind of like skin of the original vanilla turtle over it so it's kind of a mix between the old and the new models which uh, seems okay and then they were saying right here how they were kind of doing the um 
Same thing with the uh, cart, and that didn't go so well either. <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of funny. But I guess they eventually made it work because we do have the working carts. And they were also working on the alpha, uh, the alpha models for the ogres. So I don't know exactly why they're adding in the alpha ogres when we already have the vanilla ogres but we'll have to wait and see i mean turtle wow uses them all the time as well so we'll see if that's going to lead to anything or if they're teasing us anyway uh the next thing here is they also are kind of the same way how they did the turtle up here they're doing the same thing for weapons so where's the shield the shield is a good example so you see that shield we all know what that shield is we've seen it before sometimes you can find it with like the um Scarlet Crusade symbol or the Lordron symbol. But right there, it's the exact same base, but it's got a completely different logo. It looks like an anchor, so it's probably going to be for like Theramore. Not Theramore. Uh, what am I saying? Uh, Tol. Yeah, probably Tol Barad. You're probably going to get that there because Tol Barad is near Colteris. So it's probably a Colteris ish shield, it's especially with the green logo. Right there, you have just the normal leather pauldrons, but they look like the um, like the heirloom ones, where they're like double stacked like that. So there's, it's just like kind of gluing them together. Uh, that one, let's see, we got a cutlass here, but we already had a cutlass in the game. That one looks like a recolor. And that one look, looks the exact same as the normal pirate hat we've already had. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, definitely that one there. And the shoulder pads are definitely the easiest ones to pick out of there. They also said that some of the uh, some of the dungeon set, the end game dungeon sets, like Beast Stalker right here, have gotten a color change. Not not that they got a color change, that they're using a recolored separate set for something that is yet to be yeah, an unnamed source, yet to be you know announced. So the Beast Stalker. The Wild Heart Raymond and the um, the Mage outfit. Since it's blue, it looks more like a green or a teal to me. But anyway, these specific sets, and I don't know if the other ones are as well, have been allegated to something else, which is Remain a Secret. So we're going to have to find out what it is probably in the next beta. And the last thing we're going to be talking about are the new Undead Paladin mounts. So right here you see is the... I believe they're doing level 40 and level 60 mounts like normal vanilla so that's gonna be your level 40 mount which looks just like the normal like paladin mount that the alliance have only it's an undead horse with the plain looking armor and then if you go down here now it's got like the spike with the glow it's basically the same thing but it's an undead horse rather than you know a living horse so, it, but that's really cool that's a completely unique model that we don't really have anywhere else in the game i think unless i could be mistaking but i have not seen that anywhere but anyway, that's the end of this video. Short, quick little update on Project Epoch. They haven't announced yet when the last beta is going to be, but it should be relatively soon. And then shortly after the beta, we will have the full launch. My personal estimation or guess is probably springtime to maybe early summer is when we're going to see the beta with the end of this year possibly beginning of next year being the full-on launch of the server and from what i've seen a lot more people are jumping onto project epoch uh, more word is being spread about it again it's beta usually betas you're not going to have a lot of people but once it's out and people can actually play it without the fear of losing their character from beta wipes i'm pretty sure we're going to see a lot more people than than what is being shown right now especially with lurkers you know lurkers that don't say anything in discord or anything they just kind of like oh it's pretty cool i'll keep an i'll keep an eye on it <laughs> so anyway yep that's it for me and i'll see you guys next time